Hi, welcome. My name is Charlotte. I love colorful and sparkly makeup. Here on this channel, I like to play with my makeup without necessarily centering the capitalist frenzy of the makeup world. So one of the ways I love to do that is by building BYOPs. And today I'm gonna be working on like a sort of icy January color story. I've been inspired by sort of the idea of like a pine forest on a snowy day when the sky is gray and maybe it's mid-afternoon and the sky is sort of starting to darken but everything is still like white and sparkly. This is the vision. And today I'm going to try and challenge myself to stick to either 9 or maybe 12 pans. Um, but basically when I think about this kind of color story, I'm okay with creating a palette that just has maybe like two obvious looks in it uh, without like a ton of versatility. But I mean, we'll see where this goes. This is the, um, well, it's part of the palette that I had built for myself for November. It's unusual that I would keep a palette put together for this long, but I actually really really love this color story and it's so versatile there are so many looks that I still like have been meaning to create with this and I just haven't yet I'm gonna be like pulling some things out of this palette but I think I will probably like come back to this and put this color story together again at some point but basically um, I've had a lot of fun with this it would be great to like build a January palette that I have just as much fun with but if I can make a look or two out of it, I will be satisfied. Uh, this is another recent BYOP I made for the holidays. Both of these videos will be linked below, by the way, in case you haven't seen them. I've only made a few looks with this. I did travel with this palette, so I made, you know, every time I did my makeup while I was visiting family over the holidays, I did use this palette. But even so, I haven't felt nearly as inspired by this color story as I have by this one. So this cool toned gold and then this like inner corner gold had been in here. I don't think that I'm going to be pulling anything from this palette, so we'll just say goodbye to it. And now, per usual, I'm going to go through my palettes, uh, pull out the shades that I'm thinking about for the long list. And I'm thinking like mainly icy blues, but also some like minty greens, maybe a forest green to get in that sort of like pine element and silver, of course, and, uh, and maybe some like hints of purple. So that's kind of my vision right now. Again, I'm still due for a big palette reorg, so pay no attention to the like order or disorder that you see within my magnetic palettes. It doesn't mean anything. I think this sparkly champagne shade Naked Eye would look really great, but I just know that I'm going to pick this silver one over it, so I'm not pulling it.
Okay, so as I've mentioned in a few videos recently, I'm super into sparkly toppers and inner corner shades, especially recently. I think they've become really integral to the way that I do my eyeshadow these days. So I just know that that's where like a lot of the fun in building looks is going to come from. So I do want to have a good few choices. Let me just swatch all these out and figure out how many are like must-haves. So I'm going to start with this shade Mirror Gleam from the Glamlight Ghost Face palette. This is like a light, almost sagey green with a little pink-purple shimmer over top. And then in that same palette, there's this other shade, which is more... Oh my god. So this shade is a little more purple, and I don't remember the shade name, so I will pop it on the screen. But it, it similarly has like a pretty sheer base, and it has some green in the base, some green in the shimmer particles, but much more purple. So that could be nice for a pop of purple. This is the shade uh, Cookie Dough from Luxie. Definitely one that came to mind immediately when I thought about making a January palette. Um, and that has some blue, but also some purple. It's definitely on the short list. Um, this is Mercurial from Lisa Aldridge. I keep like pulling this out for palettes, I feel like, and then not ending up including it. Oh, wow. Oh my god, that shade is so gorgeous, so gorgeous. It's sort of like the opposite to Mirror Gleam, where it's a sheer purple base with little green shimmers, and instead of being a sheer green base with purple shimmers. That's really, really beautiful. I don't know that the green shimmer is exactly what I'm going to want for this palette, however. I kind of prefer the idea of having like purple shimmers. This is Play It Cool from the ColourPop Mint To Be palette. I love this as an inner corner shade. It's not intense because it is like, you know, one of those old school kind of shimmers. But out of the ColourPop shimmers I have, it's definitely one of the better formulas. And it's a really, really nice inner corner highlight. Less interesting as a topper, I would say, than these other ones. And then, okay, I know that this one's going in. This is, um... What is this called? Midnight Robe from the Glam Light Ghost Face palette. I've been having so much fun playing with this. I'm not a huge silver person, but like this is the time of year where I want to play with silver. And this guy is so sparkly, so it's really fun as an inner corner shade, but also like as a topper. I think it's fun to top this over things, and it's not a sheer base. It's kind of interesting to see what colors you get when you top this over things, or you can just, you know, take a dry fluffy brush, tap over the shimmer, and then you are truly just getting the silver shimmer particles. So that's definitely going into the final palette. Um, one of these is definitely going, I think for the short list, I'm leaning toward Mirror Gleam, and I will keep this one on sort of the back burner, thinking about how much purple I end up wanting in the palette. So that's definitely something I'm thinking about. Let me just quickly swatch this against it. This is from the Beauty Bay Midnight Palette. It's called Gleam, and it's sort of the closest thing to an inner corner shade that exists in that palette, which I think is a it's a failing of the palette because it's not really light enough or like it, they could have put a iridescence in that palette. I think it would have been a um a much nicer choice, but it's very similar, but it is less pink than that glam light shade. It's a little bit more like lavender. And definitely like a less sparkly, less complex shade. I'll be honest, this probably isn't going to make it in the palette, but I still wanted to like bring it out and compare it to things. So yeah, this doesn't change my mind on this. I think I'm going to keep this sort of um, on deck and we'll see if it ends up going in the final palette. Cookie dough, I definitely want to keep. And then the Lisa Eldridge shade, I'm going to also keep sort of on deck. Play it cool, I don't know. We'll see how much space is left. I'm not gonna kick it out outright. So if I were gonna keep it at just three of those topper shades, then I'd be on my way to a nice nine pan. I could see having like three toppers, three deepening shades, three sort of mid lid shades.
So I'm sort of comparing my lighter shimmers alongside my deeper shimmers when it comes to the blues and mint greens. And I did end up pulling just a, a few more deep blues from the Beauty Bay Midnight Palette. So let's just see. I don't know at all if these are the right tones. I don't use these deep blues very often. So let's see. This is the shade Cosmic. Um, this is Galaxy. And then this is Ocean, and I know this has a lot of purple in it. Ocean is the most interesting of those shades. It has like blue and green shimmer particles over top of like a deep purple base, but it's too purple for the palette that I want to build. So I was really thinking that I would put in one of these two shades, Potion from Beauty Bay Midnight or Bubbles from Beauty Bay Midnight. And then I swatched them out against this shade Swan Song from the Lisa Eldridge Sorcery palette, which is more of a royal blue and it's also more of a satin. And this royal blue here is very comparable to this Beauty Bay one in terms of tone, but this one has obviously like shimmer particles and, and this one's very satin. So I'm like a little bit torn. I know that the Lisa Eldridge shade is very elegant and it functions sort of more like a matte, but then I'm also like, do I want to use this slot for a shimmer? Oh, let me just, while I'm at it, I'm gonna swatch a few other things in like of a similar value. This is the shade Steel from the Beauty Bay Midnight palette. That's like not super deep, but it could fill the same role and I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, because I'm just wondering if these are too vibrant, basically. These were the ones that I was imagining putting in there. And when it comes to the lighter shimmers here, I love this shade. This is... Here, let me just tell you what everything is first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this shade is from... Uh, shoot, what is this called? I'll have to put it on the screen. I'm sorry. This is from the Dirty Martini palette from Glamlight. This is, these two are both from the Beauty Bay Midnight palette. We have the shade Sky and Shield. And then this is from Luxie. This is Snow Cone. So I'll tell you right now that Luxie, the Luxie shade, it has like a blue purple shift, but it also has this really vibrant green shift that I think is mainly what you're seeing on camera. Yeah, you could call it a mint green, but it's very vibrant, so I think that's more than what I want. I'm going to uh, eliminate this right now. As for these shades, they all fulfill a similar role. I like how like blue these are. This is by far the best formula. It's much more sparkly, and this is, tends to be what I reach for instead of these. Like anytime I would reach for something of this kind of tone and value, I don't know. I really like how Steel is playing with these guys, so I'm going to pull Steel for my shortlist. Right, I think I'm going to go ahead and eliminate these three that I have added to the mix. I prefer how Potion looks with these two, I think, but when I'm looking at this shade, I wonder if it goes more with um, the more teal green undertones here of the shade Bubbles. So that's why I'm like, hmm, I don't know on either the light or the dark which I prefer. I'm going to pull Swan Song for the shortlist. I, I do like that tone. And I think that, I think that could go with any of those and look nice. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is just swatch out a few of the shades that are like really giving me the right vibe. And I just want to keep these around as reference while I'm swatching other things against them. So Beauty Bay Steel, Glam Light Midnight Robe, Luxie Cookie Dough, and Glam Light Mirror Gleam. So with these as reference, let me retry a couple of these blues. Beauty Bay Sky, Beauty Bay Shield, Glam light something. So pretty. Beauty Bay Bubbles and Beauty Bay Potion. 
okay, here's what I'm thinking. I think that Bubbles here is a little bit too green. It reminds me of water, but like less of ice. So I'm going to pull that out for now. And I'm going to keep Potion for now because I want something in this color sort of category for now. I love this formula. It's very sparkly, but I don't need that right now because I have all these beautiful sparkly toppers to fill that role. So I'm going to get rid of this for now because I'm liking the iciness. I think I want to stick with the iciness of these two. And I might have to eliminate some of these later, but for now these are the three that I'm keeping. Alright, I can't do that for every single color category. I'm getting carried away here. But I do want to... So this is from the ColourPop Blue Moon palette. It's called Billie Jean. I've always really liked this really like periwinkle tone, I guess. Um, although this formula leaves something to be desired. Again, though, maybe I could use it as a base. But it is, on the other hand, like it's an inner lid shade and I sort of have those covered in the blues. Let's see what this one does. This is from Glamonatrix. It's called Stripped Back. Much more warm toned. And that's pretty, but I don't really think it's the right vibe for this palette. And I don't know, Billie Jean isn't really impressing me. I think I might kick that out as well. This is Beauty Bay Gleam again. It would be a nice addition to the palette. I just don't know if I... If I'm doing a small palette, I don't know if I want the purple to be like sort of interfering with the vibe so much. I'm going to push that out for now. And then I had pulled myself out some periwinkle blue mattes to go along with those purpley tones, but since I'm not including any of them, I'm going to leave these mattes out as well. I definitely want to keep a mint green matte um, to go along with those shimmers I pulled. These two are from the ColourPop Mint to Be palette. I love the mattes in this palette. I find that the selection in that palette tends to be like either blue leaning or green leaning within the mint family. And so here we have a blue leaning one, it's called Saltzer. And here we have a green leaning one that's called De Mont. Then this one is from the Glam Light Dirty Martini palette. Oh, it's quite a bit deeper than those, so it sort of fills a different role. Do I need something with that depth? I'm leaning towards Seltzer because it's more blue and because it's like sort of in between these two values. I'm gonna pull that out for now. And then let me compare these to the, the light blue mattes I've pulled. This is like a bit of a problem category to me. I don't know if you saw when I pulled my palettes out, but I have a ton of pastel blue mattes that I need to declutter just because I, I don't, I never know how to choose one of them. So I do feel overwhelmed by that category. I need to like actually decide which ones are the, the best. So this is ColourPop Take It Easel from the Fade Into Hue palette. I really, really like that one. This is Beauty Bay Mist from the Midnight palette. And then this one tends to be my go-to. It's Moonlight from the ColourPop Blue Moon palette. Interesting. They're very similar. This one is like the most vibrant in a way. It's the most white based, I guess. I have the biggest dip in the ColourPop shades, so like I'm always tempted to pull that out and try and hit pan on it. I think I'm going to go with this one. Just for like no good reason. Actually, there's one more minty matte that I should have pulled out. This is called Chill Factor, and it's also from the um, Mint to Be palette. I really, really love this. It's so dusty, and I guess kind of sagey. I definitely don't see those going together. I think overall, like, I was going for murkier, dustier, more gray tones in this, like, November palette, but this version of, like, a cold color story... I do, I am going for like more clarity, more iciness, so I think I'm going to stick with Seltzer. I'd pulled myself out some like forest green shimmers because I am picturing that sort of snowy forest vibe. This one is one that I always think of 
for this kind of color story. It's a Rude Cosmetics shade that I don't, it didn't have a name. It was from like an enchant, one of their Enchanted Pixies palettes. It's very satin, it's like a, a really nice forest green, very very simple, very one note, but I like it. And I've been like meaning to pull it out for something like this. This shade is from Lisa Eldridge. I believe this one's called Grotto. Very similar color. It's got like these really cool toned green, like emerald, I guess, shimmers. Very, very beautiful. And then this is the shade Crisp from the Beauty, or uh, from the Glamlight Dirty Martini palette. I feel like that's a lot more murky than what I'm looking for today. I don't know, I think these fulfill similar roles. This would be more like um, a building shade, like it could function like a matte, could work well in the outer corner, it could blend into other things. This is more sparkly, but it also is like a little bit more sheer. I don't see it working as well in the outer corner, but I do want to get more use on this. And at the same time, this is just like so much what I was picturing. I'm kicking out crisp. And let me just swatch a few of these mattes that I had pulled. So this is Beauty Bay Ivy from the Earthy palette. A very, very much a pine forest green. This is Seaweed, I think also from the Earthy palette. A little bit more teal in there. And this is from the Dirty Martini palette. Mm, very blue. <sighs> oh gosh, I don't know. I'm tempted to do one of these mattes and one of, and, and then this more sparkly shimmer, but I'm also sort of like, well, if I picked this one, would I just not need a matte? I just want to swatch out some of the icier blue tones that I've picked because I don't want those to be clashing. So like, do I see a world where all these shades are interacting? I'm gonna get rid of this one. Alright, I could see these doing something interesting together. I think those are the ones I'm gonna pull for right now. Um, let's see if I remember which one. Seaweed. It's going on the short list. Grotto. Okay, the final category of shade I pulled are these browns. I pulled this one, this is Disrobe from the Nearly Natural palette from Glaminatrix, and I pulled this one as like a neutral option for a deepening shade, but I know that I'm going to have a blue and a green deepening shade, and I don't think I need this one. I think I'm going to get rid of it. These two are also from Nearly Natural, and um, this one's called Barely There, it's more of a rosy toned brown. And this one is called Nothing to See. It's more of a taupey brown. Off the bat, I'm going to prefer the taupey one. I'm going to get rid of this rosy one. But I don't know. I think a lot of the time when I'm working with cool toned shades, I need a brown to be the, I don't know, like first transition or whatever to basically use to blend out something like this into my skin tone. Do I need that as part of the palette, or can I just sort of accept that as like, sort of like a priming my eye step? Uh, I'm not sure. But I will probably be putting something like this underneath any look I choose, I just might not put it in the palette. So let's see where we're at with the palette. Okay, we're at 12 pans. This is crazy, we haven't even made final selections yet. Let me swatch these all together and see how they look as a group. By the way, I keep giving really, really chunky swatches of cookie dough. It's kind of hard not to pick up a ton. I already have like a pretty decent dip in this pan, even though I haven't used it that much. But it's, it's definitely shearable.
Okay, my swatches were a lot fatter on that side, so sorry about that. I've got to say, I'm kind of second-guessing this shade Steel. I feel like it's not icy enough almost, which is weird because it is pretty much gray. I mean, maybe it just adds something different in a good way. Okay, I swatched out about a million things in this little slot, and I don't even know if you'll notice that I changed out the shade here because the one I think I'm going to go with is actually not that different from Steel. It's more of a satin finish, so much less reflective, and that gives it sort of a deeper toned vibe. And I think it's slightly less purple leaning than Steel as well. But this is the shade Goody Two Choose from ColourPop. It's just one of their single shadows. I used to really like this shade like as a one shadow look, kind of blended into the crease like a matte and all over the lid. And I've been considering decluttering it actually ever since I got this shade Steel, which feels like the same thing but just shinier. I am torn these days now that I'm into more topper shades. I don't know, I'd like to see what I can do with this kind of shade like as a base, as an outer corner shade. Like does this kind of shade actually still have a role in my collection or should I be decluttering things like this? But I don't know, when I swatch this out against uh, the others, somehow it feels like a little bit less purple and a little bit more neutral, more silver. I don't know, I just feel like it fits the vibe better and I think this is the one I'm going to go with. So this will be my final palette swatches for you here. And I will go ahead and get this arranged in a palette. I realized as I was putting this together that even if this were like a pre-made palette that I had purchased, this little column here would make so much sense uh, because this has the purple and green in it and here we have sort of purple and sort of green and so I think that this is a nice choice to tie together some of the shades in the palette. So this is my little icy January forest palette. I hope you enjoyed watching me build it. I hope this gives you some inspiration and I hope that I will get some nice looks out of this. I have a lot more videos on the way to you so please subscribe if you haven't, like this video if you liked it, and I will see you very soon. Bye!